Welcome back, Horlins, to more Betrayal of Crondor. All right, well, we have a nice little shop here that we know of. We can return there at any time to get the goody goods. I think we're going to leave this open area back into the valleys. And we have arrived at Caval Keep. Tucked away in the mid Kemian countryside like a hidden treasure, Caval Keep was a rustic ray of sunshine in the stony enclosure of the Kenting Hills. Enclosed on all sides by a low stone wall, the sheep herding community was unpresumptuous in most respects. Its only true bow to vanity being the small fountain which had been constructed in the village square. James leaned over the well. Below he couldn't see anything but heard a gentle bumping below as the bucket rode on the crest of deep water. I'm not touching people's shit. The door was ajar. They entered the building and were greeted by a man behind a small counter. Can I help you? He inquired. Perhaps you would like to open an account with us. I suppose it would depend on what you could do for us, James said with a smile. They spoke to the man about his money lending business and services that he could provide. Okay. Yet they don't let me do anything. James roused the occupants. The door cracked open with a small squeak. Just enough space to allow a pale-eyed girl in a dust keg shirt peek out them. Peek out at them. She studied them with a doubtful look, hesitant to let the strangers in. Yes, what is it? Stepping around the, the signia, Owen peered at the girl with a puzzled expression, then brightened. Mary, it's okay. They may look a little rough, but they're with me. Without a word, the servant girl stepped out of the way, allowing the three to follow her to the foyer of the manor. Excusing herself, she scurried off to fetch her master, who was located in the rear apartments. Following what sounded like a distant argument, a dark-haired man swept into the room, a look of annoyance set in his features. Shooting a glance of mild hostility first at Owen, then at the Moradil, he turned on the signier. What is the meaning of this? Kindly tell me, sir, what is it I have done to make myself so attractive to the minuscule of the world? From the moment I first stepped into my bedchamber this morning, I haven't had servants swarming about me like nits and bothersome relations at my ankles. You kindly leave me in peace. We have very great business to attend to, and I must speak to you. Whatever you must do, I am quite certain it does not involve me. I don't care what the nature of your business is about, Signa. I have other concerns. Is that so? Have you concerns above and beyond the Prince of Crondor? If so, I shall make most eager account of them before him when I return. Go on, and I'll spell them out so I may take them down. I am sure Rutha will be fascinated. The Prince, you say? Please understand that there are things going on that I'm not entirely at liberty to discuss. Suffice to say that I have something of a disagreement with the priest of the Temple of Kahuli in Kentin Rush over a private matter. So if you may excuse my outburst, I'd be happy to be of service to the Prince. What precisely can I do for thee? Not that I dislike your new house here, but what happened to the keep? The townhouse is temporary lodging, nephew. We have no intentions of staying in Kaval like common folk. As for the keep, one night three years ago an inept chambermaid left a lamp unattended by the tapestries which hung on the west wall. You remember them, don't you, Owen? Centuries old, woven by finest weavers in all the kingdoms. In seconds they went up in flames, and they took the rest of the keep with it. I remember having heard something about the fire, but I hadn't known the keep had burned to the ground. It's a miracle that you all survived. Were you able to save anything? We saved ourselves, Owen. The only things of true value that were within the castle. It is regrettable that the girl who was responsible for the blaze was killed. But Ugni and I have both escaped in a hail, hail and hardy. I ordered only the stones of the foundation left behind, and the tunnel mouth sealed. We progress forward with our lives. Why go through all that trouble? I really would not prefer to speak of this anymore. It brings me great grief, and I would prefer to discuss other matters. Weren't you a spotter for the Natalie Strangers when you were younger? I seem to recall you telling stories when I was visit the keep. That was quite a long time ago indeed, before you or young me, whatever the fuck this bitch's name is, or even Neville had been born. I still have an eye, too. I can tell you precisely how much a man is carrying by the way he walks, or how good a swordsman is by the way he pulls it free from the scabbard. Sounds like a useful skill. Any chance you could teach us something about it? Don't be upset. I spent five years training to be a spotter. 
You expect me to teach it to you in one afternoon? I suppose you're right. I'm already a decent spot on myself. I'll make you a wage, though. You teach us anything I don't already know, and I'll pay you in gold sovereigns. I'll take your wager. But I'm not one to waste my time. Two hundred sovereigns, or it's no deal. Yep, yeah, we'll take that. Ready when you are. Let's go outside, where we have more room. The Count extended his arms. Which hand do I fight with? The Count asked. Owen squinted, the distance making an accurate evaluation difficult. For several hours, the Count had unabashedly chastised him for his lack of ability in assessing the strength of his enemies. My guess is your right hand. Good, the Count said. Why? Your sword is slung at your left hip, Owen replied, flatly. While that was the obvious answer, the Count was unimpressed with his pra practicality. Noting he was about to be regaled in about ignoring subtle clues, he quickly added, And the callus of the pads of your right thumb and the base of your fingers. The Count nodded and dropped his hands to his sides. I've wasted enough time. You've lost the bet, boy. Let's get back inside. You've been most helpful, Count Covellis. But it's time we return to our business. Please give my regards to your daughter Eugene, I guess. I like Ugni better. I shall, Signor. Good traveling and keep an eye on my nephew. Oh, I shall, believe me. God, I didn't have shit to say. They usually don't. Welcome to the Duke's Head. Hey, Peter the Grey. Evening, gents. Just let me know if you need anything. The three of us are fine, but you sound as if you've had better days. Is something bothering you, friend? I don't suppose you'd be interested in becoming a scully lad, would you? I honestly can't say that it's on my list of ambitions at the moment. No, having problems with the help. I wouldn't call it problems so much as disappointments. I don't know what to say to the lad. He's a good enough boy, kind, honest, hardworking, but all in all, he doesn't have the faintest idea which end of the pan's the handle. I've tried for weeks to teach him how to cook so the wife and I could take some time off, but when it comes to cooking, he's as dense as the thunder hell. I don't know what else to do, but enough about it. What can Peter do for you? Tell us of the Nighthawks. This chap, Forfin, the Guild of Death. I wouldn't let them into my establishment. When one of my patrons comes into the inn, he comes in breathing, and I like him leaving in the same condition. Alive! Please tell me I'm looking to hire one. Hire one? I might be. There's someone I've been having problems with. Not another word of it. Not another word of it. Whatever grievance you have with this man, I don't want to know. If you're looking for a contract, you'll not find one here. If you're looking for a criminal, try the pub and prank stone. Being right across the street from the Count, you must see him quite a bit. Actually, no. The Count is quiet, likes to keep his own company, mostly. He's not one much for drinking with the commoners. His whole family has been much the same way, with the exception of his daughter. Does he have any unusual callers at his house? There aren't many that would visit him. Don't get me wrong, he isn't a bad sort, but he can be unpleasant at times. About the only people in and out of there are Eugene's suitors, and men who work for the Crown. Count. So, barkeep, what sort of fare do you offer in the duck's head? Only the best in all the kingdom. What can Peter interest you in today? A bit of roast chicken with a hunk of cheese? Spitty roast and steamed potato eye, or what? Oh, the house special, a duck baked in lemons and stuffed with rose peel crumbs. How's that strike you? I don't suppose any of those comes in servings for the road. Oh, my goodness, no. We can prepare rations for you. The very reasonable cost of 14 per pack. Shall I have them made? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm just going to get a one pack and share it. Nothing better in the store yet. But I do have rapiers now. I don't think we want any of that. I 
I have this I can sell you though. Sure. Oh, I should have kept those rubies. I could have converted them to emeralds. Oh well. Ring of the Golden Way. I didn't ever look up what this did. Uh, it gives you uh, plus 15 on your scouting. I believe Owen is our scout person. Nope. Gorath is. Not sure how long that lasts. Probably should have waited. We can test it now, though. Got to test out these items. Okay, I think that's it for this town. The High Priest of Kahuli, I request that Navon de Sandu be driven mad for his attacks on my person and my family. So my petition ends. Count Joffrey Corvallis. Oh, Corvallis got beef. Got, has beef with Navon de Sandu. An empty house. They were being watched, and they were being ambushed. All right, that's the one we got to try casting our spell on. God damn it, here we go again. Mm, can't cast him until he's knocked down, it looks like. Pendejo. This guy's all over Owen's nuts. What the fuck?
Final rest that motherfucker. Jesus, Garath, you are fucking useless now. Need to heal my boy Gorath. It's all fucked up. I'm gonna drop a tent on him. What the fuck? I don't know which ones I got a final rest, man. It's too hard to keep track. I think you only have to kill him twice. This other one didn't come back, but one started out dead, it looked like. Let's see if it still lets me cast Final Rest. Son of a bitch. I guess there's a chance they can just keep coming back if you don't kill him in time. Holy fuck. Need the end this shit. <laughs> you cock sucking bastard.
Well, this battle's getting drugged the fuck out. Holy shit. Yeah, I hope so. They need the fucking accuracy. I could just go right to one, the click. This is like a slow heal as you're walking. Better than nothing. One thing we might want to do is actually, since we found that note, A girl across the fields, black in the arrogant bearing of her father, she seemed to move like a wisp of smoke. Her tread so light it seemed she floated rather than walked through the rustling weeds. Fluttering to Owen's side, she kissed him lightly on the cheek. Oh, it's Ugni. I'm pretty sure that's just a fancy way of spelling Eugene. Did I ever tell you that you show up at the strangers of time? It's nice to see you. What are you doing wandering around unescorted? Honestly, you astonish me. By your age, most girls have the common sense to realize there are dangerous types wandering around in the open. How's that for an introduction? You're only four years older than me, Owen, and I don't see that my age has anything to do with it. I just like to come out here to think when I have a problem that won't solve itself otherwise. It also gives me a safe harbor away from my father when he's on the one of his raging fits. Is he on one at the moment? One of the worst I've ever seen. He's fired the entire kitchen staff, dismissed the guard, thrown out all five of my maids. He's been that way since about dinner time last evening. I tried to ask him what had him so upset, but he'd only tell me that he had received some very bad news from a messenger regarding a financial arrangement, which he had made. Have any idea what the note said? Who knows? He's always on about the conspiracy this, conspiracy that. It's like he's always afraid someone's about to find out some dire secret about the family when there's nothing to hide. It's getting terribly repetitive, really. So, you have this frightful look on your face as if there's something you're afraid to speak to me about. What is it? Your father's guilty. So when is a suitor going to snatch you up? Are there any that are even in good standing? There are two, neither of whom father likes, but then again, he never likes anyone I do. One is Myron, my father's solicitor who lives just outside of Caval Keep with his daughter Emmy. He does have a minor claim to nobility because his brother is an earl someplace, but father thinks his connections are too tenuous for us to consider. And what about the second suitor? He's a businessman from Kentine Rush named Navan du Sandu. Well, I know that name. I like him, though he can be a bit intense sometimes. We like to talk, and he is always asking me some point about mythology or another. He doesn't mind a girl who reads. You'll forgive us if we look a little ragged, but we're trying to find out about a murderer that took place down in Romney. <clears throat> We've been searching for a little while. Do you think the murderer escaped to Caval Keep? We're not sure. 
All we know is at the moment it may have had something to do with the brass spyglass or a silver spider we found near the bodies. I don't suppose the spyglass had a star inscribed on it, did it? I can't recall. Why? Would that be important? Someone who's part of the family you certainly don't seem to know much about family law. We used to have a spyglass that sat in the glass case in the entryway of the keep. There was legend that if a person knew the right things to think, then they could use the spyglass to spy on the minds of others. It was in the family for generations, but disappeared about the time Novell was killed in the wine cellar all those years ago. Father accused the workman of having stolen it. And what things was this person to think to make the spyglass work? I don't know. Novell used to tease me and told me he knew what to think, and he could use it, but he never did. It was only a legend, after all. As nice as I've been talking to you again, we have to be on our way. Promise me you'll find someone to look after you soon. I would appreciate it if you stopped fretting about me as if I were a child. But I'll take the promise only so long as you make the same promise. Very well. You have my word as the son and the Count of Tyburn. Goodbye, Eugene. Nafiel, Signor, Elvin, sir, is there any other way that I may help you? You have a reputation for disliking Navandu Sandu. Anything you'd care to share with us? And what makes you believe that I have animosity for Eugene Suta? You'll petition a Kahuli. You asked for Navan to be. How did you put it? Driven mad until he is grey with age. How? Did, what did you pay? And who did you pay to get that note? Do you have spies in the temple? Nothing so insidious as that count. It seems the petition collectors from the Temple of Cooley have been slow to do their duties this year. We found your note and your tithe. If you tell us why you wish to have him driven mad, I'll let this little matter slip my mind. Otherwise, I think I can take up the matter with Du Sandu. Don't you well, Signa? He already knows my feelings for him. I simply wish him gone from my family and his meddling in our affairs. Day and night, he is at Eugene asking her questions about the keep and Caval Run. How extensive were the tunnels that were under the Great Hall? Have they ever been mapped in any great detail? How much money is in my coffers? What are my schedules? Who with whom do I meet? His questions are endless. I lost a wife in that infernal keep, and I wish the matter to put, be put to rest. I never wish to hear another question again about it. Can you understand that, Signor? He brings up memories and feelings I wish to leave buried. You've been most helpful, Count Covalis. But it's time we return to our business. All right, he's got beef with do sandu do, sanduki do. Make sure there's nothing new to. The daughter's gone. I thought I'd be able to just run into her again. Let's try it. Come then. So let's go about unpleasant past. Father says he doesn't like your suit in Navan because he keeps bringing up painful memories about the keep when he asks about the family legends. The death of your mother, the fire that burned the keep down. It isn't fair to hold that against Navan. He's interested in our family and me, and so naturally has questions about the keep. Wouldn't you be interested in the history of someone you wish to marry? Wouldn't you want to know them as well as you know your own family? It's not so much the death of my mother that bothers father, though as it does Novell's death all those years ago. Father insists on clinging to a silly coincidence. Coincidence? What coincidence? Navan's last name is Du Sandu, and the same last name as the man who constructed Father's wine cellar, the one that collapsed. Father's holding it against him that he happens to have the same last name. It's so ridiculous. 
I don't remember much about Neville's, how he died. It was such a long time ago. You couldn't have known much about it so far off in Tavern. Mother and father were both in such grief, they didn't want a spectacle made of his death. Neville was down in Caval Run, sent down by father to get a keg of quig and sour from his wine cellar. We had guests that day. Caval Run? You remember underneath the keep, all those tunnels that seemed to stretch for miles? We never did know for sure how extensive it was. I used to love to take walks down there in the dark just to think and have time to myself. It's one of the things I miss most about the keep, not having tunnels to play in anymore. When Neville didn't come back from getting the key, father went down into the run after him. The wine was served and the appetizers in the first course, still father hadn't come back. The second course was served, the third, and finally father appeared. He told us the tunnel had collapsed and Neville was trapped behind it all. We were never able to dig it out, enough to recover the body. He's still down there living on rats. Your father said Nevan kept at you about the family legends. He was fascinated by anything that had to do with Kovala's family. He would ask where the spyglass had come from and how long the keep had been standing and where the Guardia Revanche went to. We talked about everything. Guardia Revanche, I need this sword. What does the Guardia Revanche have to do with our family history? I thought it was some kind of legend about the days when only elves lived here. That part of the legend that everyone knows has to do with the elves, but for a time the Guardia Revanche was in our family's possession, or so family legend has it. Upon her fourteenth birthday, the Lady of Caval Keep was given a special present by her elven servant to give her husband, Lord Cavallus, a sword that would make him great among men. Whereupon she ran to his bedchamber to present him with a great gift, but upon opening the door, she was shaken by a great evil. Within her hand, the sword blade began to glow, and she screamed as she raised the blade over her head and cleaved her husband's head from off his shoulders. From there she went from one child's chamber to the next, until she had slain all her children by Lord Corvallis, and once that was done, she ran mad and was seen in Caval no more. How charming! You don't have it laying about somewhere, do you? <coughs> Be nice to me, or I may give the sword to you. No, the legend goes on to say that it was eventually removed from the family after the episode was repeated by later generations of other branches of a family. A book I have about it tells where it went, but I lent the book to Navan so he could look at it over. Look it over. That's weird. I thought that the Guardian of Rocher was only supposed to work on Morid Hill. It's a legend. No one ever said that a legend has to be consistent. There's a crazy cursed sword out there. Goodbye, silly goose. Take care of yourself. All right, we're going back to town again. Peter the Grey. Back already. Fun enough with me. I like company. What can Peter do for you? Well, we can talk a lot. Did Eugene ever tell you how it was Neville died? I was only seven midsummers when it happened. That was a terrible, terrible day. I thought Eugene would come apart then, but she was quite a bit of a mother in her lot of iron. They dug for four days, poor men. Never were able to recover the little tot's body from all the rubble. I still can't imagine what the Count must have been thinking. Uncle, what did he do? I mean, why did he hire the man Sandu to build the wine cellar for him in the first place? He had a bit of a reputation as a drunk as it was. And three times while he was building it, the Count discovered him so capped, he couldn't even stand up straight to take his thrashing. The Count should have known the cellar would be unstable. I'm sorry, I'm not being fair. Of course, none of us had a, a way of knowing. That wouldn't have purposely had the cellar built shoddy. Why waste his money? I hear the Count isn't too thrilled with one of Eugene's suitors, a fellow by the name of Navandu Sandu. Know anything about him? It's a pity he doesn't like the man. He's perfectly charming, handsome, mannered if you haven't crossed him, zealous if he thinks you're doing something wrong to someone. 
He'd be just the cat's whiskers for Eugene. Any idea where we could find him? Ah, he's a businessman, so it may be difficult to track him down. I think he lives in Kentine Rush. You might try asking in the taverns there. Look, I don't need your rooms, buddy. If you'll excuse us, we have a few other things we need to be about. <clears throat> All right, we got lots of info here. Got us a hole here. Meh. How many we got there? Another hole out here. With some shitty arrows. Whoa! Triple chesticles! All right. What goes down? What goes with the wagon that wagon... I can't read. What goes with the wagon that doesn't benefit the wagon? But the wagon cannot move without. What goes with the wagon that doesn't benefit the wagon? Naughty Netty. Fetty Foo. Betty? Betty goes with the fucking wagon? Actually, I actually had to look this one up because it's fucking stupid. And there's no way anyone would guess this that had a brain. Noise. Noise goes with the wagon. It doesn't benefit the wagon, but the wagon can't move without noise. Fuck whoever wrote that. Stupid. Fuck your shells, too. Useless. Alright, give me a real riddle. Passed from father to son and shared between brothers. Its importance is unquestioned, though it is used more by others. Passed from father to son and shared between brothers. Its importance is unquestioned, though it is used by more than more by others. Is passed from father to son. M N T P. We 
could try a name. Name is passed between... Yes! See, that's a real riddle. If I can figure it out, it's a good one. If I can't, it sucks. No, I'm not carrying around all this shit. Fuck off with that. I don't even know if these are it's any good. Should better stand there till I use it. Holy shit, you need to repair this thing, buddy. Heyo! Never resting, never still, move silently hill to hill. It does not walk, run, or trot. All is cool where it is not. Sunshine. Don't ask me how I knew that. I think I've heard this one before. strength in the those are goody good potions right here definitely want those you can keep that other shit James hesitated, noticing the finely engraved sign above the door. He read it aloud. David Tatum, scribe. Among other things, replied a strong voice, historian, philosopher, mathematician. I have my nose in everything. Emerging from the building's cover, the scribe cast an annoying look at Gorath as he continued. Right now, I'm investigating combat tactics. Perhaps you would be interested in helping. And what would we profit from it? Owen asked quietly. Information, the scribe replied. You talk for an hour, and then I talk for an hour. You pick the subject, intrigued? The scribe listened. Listened. When at last Gorath had exhausted himself, he asked the man what he might know about the assassins operating in the kingdom that he discovered, and all he knew on the subject. That's about it, the scribe said at last, and he folded his hands in his lap. Helpful. More than you know, James said. I think we'll have a better chance of spotting ambushes, but it's time we left. The scribe nodded. I have things to do as well. I have to find out what happens with one of my assistants, so I may be gone for a while. Good traveling. Guess the scribe hooked us up with some scouting. Yep. Gorath's our main scouter. Don't know why I checked that off. It's strange. <clears throat> the hammering inside the house offered a perfect musical counterpoint to James rapping on the small front door.
Okay, never mind. My mouse my mouse button said fuck y'all, you're not reading that. James sniffed the air. While for the better part of the last hour he had been trying to piece together the details of the murder at the Black Sheep Tavern, something else had begun nagging at him. Elusive as the names of all the markers he'd once known, it had been only after a few minutes of consideration that he'd realized what it was that was distracting him. Do you smell anything odd? He asked Gorath. Struck by the oddity of the smelling jasmine in the open, he could spot no natural flora that could account for the scent. But while searching, he thought he spotted someone moving down the road toward what them. brings visitors from Krondor? It was this dipshit. Nivan du Sandusky. There's little here to give a vent enough to warn visitors from a bit of sea. And if that weren't enough, it seems we have guessed as well from... Alvanda. Welcome to Kenting Rush. This may sound like a strange question, but a moment ago I thought I smelled spice. Jasmine, to be exact. Does it grow near here? You have a keen nose. Unfortunately, it isn't local. I deal in spices as well as a number of other imported goods. I've just returned from a lengthy trip into cash, and I'm afraid that the scent clings a bit to the clothes. But you've only just come up the road. I've been smelling this shit for some while. I am told the scent carries. There's a bit of a wind today, so as you are travelers in the area and dealing with natives can sometimes be difficult, is there any way I can be of some assistance? What reason would Count Kovalis have to dislike you, Nivon? Perhaps he is an overprotective father. Who is to say? I'm frankly surprised he hasn't hired a band of Nighthawks to have me killed. I asked too many questions for his taste. You think he has connections to the Guild of Assassins? It's a well-known fact he is surrounded by Nighthawks. They guard his house, his lands, Kaval Keep. When his daughter Eugene and I have time together, we are always followed by Assassins, though they never wear their Guild clothing while working for the Count. Why don't any of the local people do anything about it? Surely they object to having Nighthawks loose in the area. They look the other way. As long as none of them are being killed, it doesn't concern them. I'm sure that's even true in Crondel. By any chance, are you related to the Sandu who was a workman who built Count Corvallis's wine cellar? None, but unfortunately the Count refuses to believe me. I see conspiracy in his eyes every time I meet him, but I don't know how I can put him at ease about the accident. We would both all be healthier if he didn't dwell on such unfortunate coincidence. Do you know anything about the accident that killed Novell Corvallis? It was a peculiar accident, if I understand the tavern keeper at the Duck's Head in Caval Keep. Seems the Sandu was fellow was something of a drunkard who had a reputation for building inferior structures. I find it hard to believe the Count would have entrusted the construction to such a man, but surely he couldn't have meant for the wine cellar to collapse. You think the Count intended to have a wine cellar collapse? For what purpose? I've heard the Count suspected his son of something terrible. The Count and I have enough bad blood between us. I don't wish to say anything else that will jeopardize my suit with Eugene. As the things I have related to our rumor, I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell the Count we have spoken on this subject. I've been scared, as the Malik's Cross tells us you are quite a chess player. High praise. He isn't too terrible at it himself. He told us you had a move called Sandu's Retreat. I'd be intrigued to learn it from you. I couldn't just give away a move like that. It's kept me undefeated for several years now. I'd be willing to pay you to learn how. You'd have to arrive, and aren't you? He won't know what's hit him until you have him. As I recall, he always bets an emerald, so I'll let you at least get something from the wind. Say, a hundred gold sovereigns. It'll be worth it just to see the look on his face. Proceed. Give me a moment to find a few appropriate stones. If you'd sketch out a board in the dirt, I will show you the architecture of grand humiliation. James grinned as Navon played out his moves using an odd assortment of stones. It was apparent the play would have dev be devastating if used against an aggressive opponent. Think he can remember all that? Navon asked, brushing the dirt from his hands. Not a problem, James replied, dumping Navon's fee into the ha hastily created chessboard. I think Ivan is in for quite a surprise. As we have appointments elsewhere, we should probably be on our way. Good traveling to you, then. And if you ever need anything... Have a need of anything that aren't hinting rush, be sure to come see me. It was an unusual well. James ran his hands across the wooden crank, tried to turn it, but discovered it was jammed. Reaching down to get a better grip, his fingers scraped against something hard and smooth. It was small, round. It was a small round lock. I believe I'm familiar with this kind of lock. 
In days past, some men required the ladies to wear locked undergarments as an assurance of chastity while they were away. As the stories go, the men gave them keys to these undergarments to none but their closest and most trusted friends. Naturally, the ladies did everything in their power to convince the friends to use the key to remove the uncomfortable things, and many illicit romances were said to have developed. The lock was always replaced before the husband returned home. But after unlocking the device, the key was often left off with a friend for the next time the husband went away. In the meantime, the secret lovers would sometimes find an abandoned well and put one of these locks in the use the key to hide love notes. James checked their keys. Finding a virtue key, he moved to the well, found the lock, and inserted the small key, turning it gently. The lock was a bit rusty, but after a few seconds, he was able to twist the key in the lock, producing a satisfying click. The handle now unlocked, he cranked in a clockwise motion, and after about a dozen turns, the dry bucket emerged from the well. Searching inside, they found something small and covered with the dirt and leaves. It was a knight's piece. And as we know, that goes to the chessboard. Someone had paid a great deal to have this chess piece made. The marble soapstone from which it had been carved was the type available only from a hellish region within Great Cash, known as the Jalper De Desert. An area also renowned for its Skejai and Keshian Brotherhood of Thief of Assassins. Interesting. Should I take this all the way back to the well now? Or the waterfall? A few things around here we can explore. Some more chesticles. Not enough room. It stands while others sit. It groans when it is too full. It has four legs, but it cannot run. A chair? No. Uh... Try table. Easy, easy. Oh, the defensive shit. He's got some defensive shit already. I think we used him battling the trolls. A new scroll? Is it a new spell? Thoughts like clouds? No, it's not. You probably sell it or drop it. I don't think that particular spell is worth a vast amount of money.
going to be wrapping up this video soon and we do have some more stuff to do in this area for the next video but I'm going to go grab the loose items not a lot of battling out here it's a lot of breathing room The one who made it didn't want it. The one who bought it didn't need it. The one who used it never saw it. This is an old riddle. I believe this is in Conquest of Camelot as well. Nothing to write home about. Yeah, let's try to open it. Clickety clack. To the priest of Kuli, whoever it is that is still in my pants, may he be eternally at the pot. G. L. Esquire of Havenwood. Oh, there's a stump out here as well. Boo! Oh yeah, I'm walking right through that shit, by the way. How and why? Because I know... I know things. Holy shit. This is an interesting trap. Smacking them with these swords. Alright, James got some strength. These trolls don't ever carry shit.
ale cask. His curiosity is sufficiently piqued. Owen popped open the half-gallon cask and inhaled deeply. Immediately, his senses reeled as the heady cinnamon-like aroma assaulted him. Cashian ale! Holy shit. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this here for now. I feel like we're not supposed to have that yet. More cashew ale. Well, we know where the stash of cashew ale is, and with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time with more Betrayal at Crondor.